Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade problem. Okay, what does it mean? It just means that I kind of thought about this idea. Uh, maybe it comes from somewhere else, I don't know. But anyways, we have this expression or equation A squared plus B squared equals 1. And then we're going to evaluate based upon the given value of A squared plus B squared. We're going to evaluate the quotient a plus b i mean a plus 1 plus bi and a minus 1 minus bi okay initially the the denominator had a plus sign in front of the bi but then i kind of realized that it doesn't work hopefully this is going to work anyways i'll be presenting two methods and we'll start with the first one okay so for my first method i'm going to go ahead and use a super duper substitution method i mean substitution is in and of itself, awesome. And when you use that trigonometric substitution, it's just awesomer. And what do I mean by that? If you have two numbers whose uh, sum of squares is one, then you can do the following. A is equal to cosine of alpha, and B is equal to sine of alpha. Alpha is just an angle, okay? And then when we do the replacement, obviously if you plug it in here, it's gonna work because sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. I hope you all know that. Now let's go ahead and plug in uh, these values. We're going to get cosine alpha plus 1 plus i times b, which is sine alpha. And that is going to be divided by a minus 1 minus i times sine alpha, which is bi. All right, so far so good. Now, this might look pretty complicated, but don't worry. Whenever you get something like this, like cosine with a 1 or plus or minus 1, then you should think double angles, or should I say half angle formulas, whatever you want to call this. But I'm going to go ahead and consider the following. Cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, or I can write it as 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta. I could also write it as cosine squared minus sine squared, but these two come from there, and these are going to be, these are going to be more helpful in our case. But of course, in this case, alpha is 2 theta, so that kind of gives us the half angle. Make sense? So we're going to uh, use alpha over 2 for that. Make sense? So now we're going to replace cosine alpha with 2 cosine squared half of alpha, because that's what the formula says, minus 1. And then there's a plus 1. And there's a plus i. And then for sine alpha, I'm going to use sine 2 alpha. I mean 2 theta, I should say. 2 sine theta cosine theta. This is the uh, double angle for sine. And it's just a one formula, which is nice. Cosine has too many formulas. So it's going to be 2 sine alpha over 2 again for the half angle thing. And then we're going to divide this whole thing by pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. But this time, you know what? We have a plus 1 here. We have a minus 1 here. You see that? Oops. I meant to write over it. So we need to use a different formula. It's going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha over two. If you try the other one, you're going to realize it's not going to work, okay? But the sign is going to stay the same, so it's just going to stay the sign, and then we're going to simplify this a little bit. I tried to say it with a British accent, maybe it was horrible. Anyways, one cancels out, one cancels out. Notice that cosine alpha over 2 is a common factor in the numerator, and sine alpha over 2 is a common factor. I don't want to circle that because that's a square, but you get the idea. So I'm going to take out Cosine alpha over 2. Makes sense. Maybe, I, should I take out a 2? Cosine alpha over 2? Yeah, I think that makes more sense because we have 2 all over the place. And then inside, I should be getting cosine of alpha over 2 to get the square. And then plus, I have to be careful with the signs. This is a plus sign. And then I have i times 2 sine alpha over 2. Because, oops, there's no 2 there because I already took the 2 out. So it's just going to be sine alpha over 2. Make sense? Great. Now, at the bottom, I want to take out a negative 2 because I want to have some positivity inside. And then inside, I'm going to be getting a positive sine alpha over 2. Of course, this is going to be a positive as well because they're both negatives. And i times cosine alpha over 2 because I took out sine, right? Make sense? Okay. You're probably hoping like for something to cancel out. They don't. But don't worry. At least the 2 cancels out. That's success, right? Now, what do we do with the rest? So here's what we do. 
First of all, we have a negative sign, don't forget that. So we have cosine over sine, which is a cotangent. So we're going to write this as negative cotangent alpha over 2. I know some people want me to write this in parentheses. No big deal. You get the idea, don't you? And then here we have to subtract. But the problem is this is like in the standard form, like cosine theta plus i sine theta. Let's convert it. Sine and cosine are switched, so I have to use pi over 2 minus the thing. So I can write this as cosine pi over 2 minus alpha over 2 and this one as sine of that. Make sense? Because pi over 2 minus that is going to convert to the co-function. So it's going to give me the following then. Cosine alpha over 2 plus i times sine alpha over 2 divided by cosine pi over 2 minus alpha over 2 plus i times sine the same thing. It's like I know it's kind of boring to keep writing the same thing over and over, but get used to it because that's very helpful. Now, when you divide two things with um, trigonometric form, like the polar form, whatever, uh, it's not Euler form, but at least it's in trigonometric form, you subtract the angles, right? The arguments. So these two are going to be subtracted, giving us the following. What do you get if you subtract alpha over 2 minus alpha over 2 plus alpha over 2? Because you have to negate. And the same thing for sine, right? Let me just simplify and then I'm going to write it, okay? Now, alpha over 2 is not going to cancel out. What am I doing? It's just going to add. They're going to be alpha. Okay, so we're going to get negative cotangent alpha over 2. And that's going to be cosine pi over 2 minus alpha. And that's going to be i times sine pi over 2 minus alpha. Again, that's going to do some conversion, right? Let's do it. No worries. And when we do this, uh, it's going to give us... By the way, I want to make sure... Oops. I made a mistake. I just realized that. Yeah, it's supposed to be the opposite. Okay. So it would matter for cosine, but it would matter for sine. So this is going to be alpha minus pi over 2. And of course, the same thing for the other one. And of course, that makes a huge difference. And we're going to get alpha minus pi over 2. Great. Now, what is alpha minus pi over 2? Of course, that's the opposite of pi over 2 minus alpha. But for cosine, is an even function. So it's not going to matter. It's just going to be the same thing as cosine pi over 2 minus alpha, which is sine alpha. But this is going to be negative i times cosine alpha. Great. That looks familiar, right? Sort of. Now, this is the expression we got in terms of alpha, so we kind of have to back substitute. Let's draw a triangle. A triangle is an awesome tool. We use it in trigonometry. This is going to be our alpha, and we're going to extend it. By the way, uh, we are started off with mm, cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, where this is a and this is B. Hence, we get the A plus BI, which is the name of the channel, right? Great. So, since um, that's the case, uh, B over A is going to give us tangent. So, I'm going to assume that this is B and this is A, right? And then the sum of their squares is 1, so which means the hypotenuse is 1. So, we can kind of expand it. That's going to be a 1 as well. And then the hypotenuse of the hypotenuse, the longer hypotenuse, is going to be something else. I don't think I'm going to need it because we're dealing with tangent and cotangent here. Cool. So that's half of that. Oh, by the way, let me explain why that's the case. Because I extended it as long as the hypotenuse here, which is 1. So that just created an isosceles triangle. Therefore, from the exterior angle theorem, I got half of alpha, which makes alpha when added to itself. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's proceed. Now, from here, we can basically find cotangent alpha over 2 with a negative sign. Tangent alpha over 2, first of all, is just going to be b over a plus 1. You have to invert it and then negate it, which is going to give us a plus 1 over b. And then you have to negate it. So let's go ahead and plug it in. What is sine alpha? Sine alpha is b over 1, which is b. And this is a. Isn't that nice? Okay. a plus bi, b minus ai. Cool. ai, artificial intelligence. Now, let's go ahead and plug it in. This is going to be with a negative sign. And inside, we're going to get sine alpha, which is b minus ai. So that should be the answer, right? I mean, you can go ahead and distribute and get something a little, I don't know if it's going to be nicer, but let's leave it at that because we still have to do our second method. And I know it's been a long video. Bear with me because we're still going to do another awesome method. That's called the second method. Okay, great. So we have a plus b plus bi divided by a minus 1 minus bi. And we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Awesome. 
Here's what I'm going to do, and I'm pretty sure you would do the same thing. Multiply by the conjugate. What's the conjugate? A minus 1 plus bi, a minus 1 plus bi. Notice that we are considering the real parts and the real parts and the imaginary parts. Great. Let's go ahead and distribute. While I'm distributing, I want to kind of pack these things together so that we can multiply real by real, real by imaginary, so on and so forth. Makes sense? So I don't have to make a mess. When you multiply these two things, that's going to give you a squared minus 1. And then the next thing is going to be a plus 1 multiplied by bi. And then next thing is bi times a minus 1. And then bi times bi is b, uh, b squared i squared, which is minus b squared. Got it? Okay. All of that is divided by this multiplied by that. Actually, you can also do uh, it as follows. If you multiply z by z conjugate, you get the absolute value of z squared. Remember? And what that is equal to? Is that 1? No. It's just going to be a minus 1 squared plus b squared. In other words, sum of two squares. Be careful about that, okay? Now, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit and see if we're going to get something simple like that, okay? Take a look at that. Take a picture because we'll have to refer to it. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this. So I get a squared minus 1 plus abi plus bi plus abi minus bi minus b squared. I want to distribute everything so I can cancel out nicely. a squared minus 2a plus 1 plus b squared. Great. Now I notice that bi cancels out and abi, they can be added. And I have a squared minus b squared. So let's go ahead and put these two together, minus 1. And then I have 2abi. And then all of that is divided by, oh, I got a squared plus b squared, which is equal to 1. It's given, remember that? So that's going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 minus 2a. Great. Not so great because it's a little different than this problem. Now, how do we reconcile these? That's a good question, and that's going to be your task because this brings us to the end of this video. It's already been like 12 minutes, and... This brings us really to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.